Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards warns Europe against threatening Tehran, saying it would force it to expand the range of its ballistic missiles to above 2,000 kilometers, which would provide Iran with the capability to target European capitals. Lebanese Prime Minister Saad El Khariri emphasizes that the Hezbollah organization, which has both political and militant dimensions, must stop interfering in regional conflicts on Iran's behalf and accept Beirut's neutral policy to bring an end to Lebanon's political crisis. United Nations envoy to Syria Staffan de Mistura announces that while the world body was actively seeking to reignite a political process to the war-torn country, Damascus has yet to confirm its participation in the upcoming summit in Geneva, which is scheduled for the 28th of November. Iran's deputy chief of the Islamic Republic's Revolutionary Guards, Brigadier General Hussein Salami, warned Europe against threatening Tehran, saying it would force it to expand the range of its ballistic missiles to above 2,000 kilometers, which would provide the Revolutionary Guards with the capability to target European capitals. General Salami said that so far, the Islamic Republic felt that Europe is not a threat, so the Revolutionary Guards did not increase the range of its missiles. But if Europe wants to turn into a threat, Iran will have no other choice but to increase the range of its missiles. At present, Iran has one of the Middle East's largest missile programs, and some of its precision-guided missiles have the range to strike its regional enemies, including Saudi Arabia and Israel. That said, while Iran has repeatedly claimed its missile program was meant solely for defensive purposes, Western powers have condemned its ballistic missile program, which experts assert could carry a nuclear payload, effectively breaching UN Resolution 2231, which explicitly calls on Iran in the documents Annex B, subsection 3, not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons, including launches using such ballistic missile technology. Iranian officials, however, have rejected any demand to limit its ballistic missiles activities, claiming the resolution's referral to its ballistic-related program was more of an advisory rather than a binding demand. Nevertheless, in an effort to preserve the 2050 nuclear agreement, officially known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, that after Washington decided to declare the Islamic Republic in non-compliance with the international deal, France, in cooperation with other European states, has called for an uncompromising dialogue with Iran about its ballistic missile program and a possible negotiation over the issue separate from the 2050 nuclear agreement. Paris hopes to focus on Iran's ballistic missile program would satisfy Washington that would consequently shift its consideration from nixing the nuclear agreement. The French call, however, has angered the Islamic Republic, which declared its ballistic activities as non-negotiable, prompting the latest threats by Iran's Revolutionary Guards, which is in charge of Tehran's ballistic missiles, to threaten Europe of military consequences. Now to Lebanon, where Prime Minister Saad El Khariri underlined in an interview with the French network CNews that the Hezbollah organization, which has both political and militant dimensions, must stop interfering in regional conflicts and accept Beirut's neutral policy to bring about an end to Lebanon's political crisis. J'attends que la neutralité qu'on s'est mis d'accord dans le gouvernement et le, 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 le communiqué qu'on a fait dans le Parlement euh, où on a dit qu'on aura les tout bon intérêt pour tous les pays arabes, qu'on le fait. Euh, à l'intérieur. À l'intérieur, mais, mais... mais on ne peut pas dire quelque chose et faire quelque chose d'autre. 
The Iranian-backed Hezbollah, which forms part of the Lebanese government, is currently embroiled in several conflicts across the Middle East on Tehran's behalf, including in Syria and Iraq, as well as allegations of supporting Iranian-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen, an allegation Hezbollah denies. Now with regard to the conflict in Syria, United Nations envoy to Syria Staffan de Mistura announced that while the world body was actively seeking to reignite a political process to the war-torn country, Damascus has yet to confirm its participation in the upcoming summit in Geneva, which is scheduled for the 28th of November. When my deputy Ambassador Ramzi held consultation in Damascus with the government over the weekend, the government did not yet confirm its participation in Geneva, but indicated that we would be hearing from them soon. While the Syrian government in opposition maintains significant gaps that do not predict any positive outcome from the scheduled talks in Geneva, the Mistura emphasized that recent success in bringing about various de-escalation arrangements in the war-torn country point to a real potential to move forward toward a genuine political process. This crisis, one of the worst in the history of the UN, now has the potential, real potential, to move towards a genuine political process. A clearer map of the escalation, ceasefire and the confliction arrangement has emerged largely enabled by Astana and Amman. We see the emergence of international consensus, and we must begin to stitch the process into concrete results, enabling Syrians to determine their own future freely. The Syrian opposition's chief negotiator, however, said that the groups he represents do not have high expectations of the upcoming talks in Geneva, while accusing the Assad regime of applying delaying tactics to obstruct a political solution. Nasser el-Khariri further stressed that as part of any political transition, the opposition demands the ousting of Syrian President Bashar Assad and would not accept any other alternative. بالمماطلة لعرقلة التقدم في الحل السياسي ففي الوقت الذي تأتي فيه قوى الثورة والمعارضة بوفد واحد وتتجاوز كل العقبات وفي الوقت الذي يسعى فيه السيد المبعوث الخاص إلى إنهاء طور المحادثات السياسية والبدء بمفاوضات جدية ومستمرة وحقيقية وفق جدول زمني حدده قرار مجلس الأمن نرى اليوم أن النظام لا يأتي إلى المفاوضات ونؤكد على أن الانتقال السياسي الذي يحقق رحيل الأسد في بداية المرحلة الانتقالية هو هدفنا a Syrian government official told TV7 that the demands by the Syrian opposition considering the reality on the ground are completely and utterly absurd. The official, who has to remain anonymous as he was not permitted to talk on the matter, stressed that the government of Damascus has most of Syria under its control and would not consider negotiating with a group of rebels whom are clearly detached from reality. Nevertheless, the Syrian official indicated his government's willingness to advance a political process that would ultimately bring about a much desired political solution, a solution of peace which the official emphasized can only be achieved by President Bashar al-Assad. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan of Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.